Oh, welcome. We are so glad you're here. If you're online, make sure to share the service and like it. Hit that like button. Yes. Well, my name is Tim. The guy next to me is Shane. We are in this great new sermon series called This is the Way. And so if you're not a Star Wars fan, this is still for you. Our Christmas services are going to be all about this during this series. So make sure to go to our website to get your free tickets. Yes, uh, there are some very strong opinions that I'd like very. to talk about. Yes. Regarding Christmas music. Uh, some people <laughs> never want to hear it, and uh-huh. others listen to it all year long. That's right. I am the type that hates Christmas music. And I wow, that's a strong opinion. Didn't want to say that because I know that it's going to get me in trouble with some people. <laughs> but my uh-huh. wife loves it. Oh my goodness, we've been listening for four months already. Wow, which might contribute to the reason why it could. we dislike it so much. Yeah, and by right. we, I mean me. <laughs> my kids love it. Everyone loves it. It's just you. Yeah, but we're going to talk about what is your favorite Christmas song. Tell a neighbor or comment in the chat. Um, I know for me. It goes down to the memories that I have as a tiny little middle school Shane, if you can imagine. Let's just I love where this is going already. A little bit. Could you imagine 13 year old Shane in his white button up shirt with a red bow tie and the matching cummerbund? Wow, the cummerbund. Yes. <laughs> Sitting down next to his father to sing White Christmas. Oh, I bet it was beautiful. Yes, it was definitely a Christmas staple for me then. And Do you have any video of this? There might be. We my, need to find yeah. this and, and see it and hear it. I want to see little Shane, Cumberbund Shane singing this yes, song. Yes, my yeah. mom does a pretty good job of collecting these little trinkets and memories. That and sounds amazing. Them. So, you know, one of these days, who knows? Love that. My favorite Christmas song is non-traditional. It's Christmas Hallelujah. Cloverton has a good version of mm. it. Uh, the Pentatonics do one. Nice. It gives me all of the Christmas feels. Yes. Right? The vibe is super important. Yeah. I, I, I believe that. Um, but there are some songs that are staples to the Christmas season, uh, the most popular Christmas song, according to the internet. Here's some trivia. Yeah. So if uh, so, this is A, All I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. B, White Christmas. There you go. Bing Crosby. There you go. I knew it'd be on the list. C, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year uh, by Andy Williams. And D, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas by Bing Crosby. Bing's back again. Back again. All right. What do you think? My, my guess is All I Want for Christmas is you i that is the correct answer yes i think i've heard that song at every shopping mall i've ever been to in the season very popular it's like my wife loves that song yeah it's on repeat everywhere okay now that we've talked about some of our favorites let's talk a little about some things that we don't like about christmas songs some of the worst or most annoying what is your least favorite drop it in the chat or comment uh, to your neighbor next to you shane do what um, is your least favorite? So I have a little bit of a longer list when it comes to least favorite, but <laughs> uh-huh. for me, it comes down to Jingle Bell Rock, oh. and I know it's fun, like you can kind of dance right, right. it, it's just, the problem with me is that I only know like the first seven words of the song, <laughs> and so all I hear in my head is, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock. And it just that will <laughs> that, play that's it. infinite loop in my mind, and I can't. It can't. It won't go away. Uh-huh. So that has to be number one. It's an earworm. That's yes. good. My least favorite is also a repetitive song. We wish you a merry Christmas. They say that over and over. Caroling and, staples. Yes. Yeah. And then they get to a really weird part where they say, "Now bring us some figgy pudding." <laughs> I don't know what figgy pudding is, what but world? it doesn't sound good to me. It sounds gross. I, I've never seen it. Yeah. And, and then people start to get angry and belligerent and say, we aren't going to leave until you give us figgy pudding. Now, figgy pudding must be amazing if people are going to yeah. demand it in a Christmas song, but that's just that's a strange thing to me. So maybe you or someone you know, you could just maybe this year when you go caroling, sing that song. But don't leave out the figgy pudding. Yeah, demand course. demand figgy pudding. I want to get to the bottom of this. If, is is this even good? Yeah. Right. Like what what kind of flavor palette do you need to have for figgy pudding? I don't know. If you have a recipe for figgy pudding, I know I'm going to talk about this. We yes, I would I love need to, to know. see that. I need to know if this is actually something I should have at Christmas. Yes, drop it in the chat. Your best figgy pudding recipe, please. But we do love Christmas, even though. There might be some strong opinions about the music that would accompany it. Right. But uh, we want to invite you to our Christmas services this year. Go to sb.church slash Christmas to reserve a free ticket for in-person services or go check out online services uh, for those times. Uh, Invite your family and friends to join us um, as we get ready for the This is the Way series. Uh, We're going to jump in right here to our service. So thanks for joining us. 
Hey, welcome to Stonebridge, wherever you find yourself. Will you stand with us? We encourage you to sing this out. In this season, we get to sing songs that we know and love. Let's, let's sing this together. Being together, we want to welcome you. Whether you are here in the room or whether you are in your living room, in the song we are going to sing about the joy that we have in Christ. So let's prepare our hearts, room for Jesus as we sing this song. He gives us joy. He gives us peace. Let's sing this out together. Sing. 
Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in him. Everything we need. I think it's, it's easy for us sometimes to search for those things in this world. I'm sorry, you can have a seat. <laughs> to search for the things that we need in this world. Search for things that will fulfill me. To fill this gap that we have, right? Right? trying to find this peace somewhere. I, 
believe something magical happens when we truly lean in to the fact that Jesus is enough. We accept that promise that God made to us, maybe the greatest promise that we've ever been given, that he would send Jesus to this earth to once and for all take care of our largest need we'll ever have in salvation. I believe when we lean into that truth and accept that promise, we find that God's love is abundant. His grace is sufficient. That when we truly lean in, we find that joy and this peace that we've been searching for in this world. And that's why it's so important that we remember just how Jesus fulfilled that promise that the Lord made for us. So we have this time of communion. If you're here in the room, I hope you grab some elements on your way. And if you didn't, go ahead and find some. Uh, but if you're joining us online, well, just take a moment, find something around the house, uh, just something to hold in your hands, bread and juice or water, uh, to help remind you of the body and the blood of Jesus that was broken and shed for me. And let's take this moment and remember Christ is enough. I'm going to pray and then we're going to continue worshiping in song. Let's just accept that promise. Jesus, it's hard to believe that you could love us so much through everything that we've done and fulfill that promise. Jesus, you didn't need to die. You didn't deserve that death. I deserve that death. But because of your love, because we, can know, we know we can believe that promise, God, you laid your life down, Jesus. Help us to remember, God, you are enough. You are enough. Everything we need. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
me sing this next part and just declare these words. Lord, we are so thankful for the gift of Jesus Christ. We are thankful uh, just how you brought your heavenly kingdom down to this earth. Um, we're thankful for the example that Jesus gave us in, in how to love one another, how to be patient and kind and gentle with one another. And so God, I just pray that in this Christmas season, we will continue to love Jesus like he has loved us. And remember just how you brought your kingdom to this earth. Amen. Amen. We are so glad you're joining us today. No matter where you are, in the room or online, if you are new here, we want to say welcome home. We hope Stonebridge is a place where you can connect and build a community. A great way to connect with us is in using our sb.church app. Um, you can find some great information about Stonebridge, and you will also find a new here form that you can fill out. We just want to get to know you a little bit more, and in return, we'll give you a Starbucks card uh, 
just for joining us. Yep, that's right. So recently I've had a lot of conversations with people who are just, they're feeling lost. Like they have lost their way. This has been a rough year and it's left a lot of people searching. And so I love that our message series for this Christmas is called This is the Way. It's not only a reference to The Mandalorian and who doesn't love Baby Yoda, yes. uh, but it's also providing answers for what to do when we are searching. And so you probably know somebody who you can invite to join you for Christmas Eve services this year. So we hope that you'll begin by talking to them about it and thinking uh, about which service is going to work for you. Invite them to the one that's going to work best. You can go to sb.church to register for free tickets for that. We just want to plan for you and for your friends and for your family so that everyone has room to join us at Christmas Eve services this year. And we hope that you'll plan to join us. As, as we make our preparations as well. Yeah. Our mission at Stonebridge has always been to share Christ and build believers. And we are passionate about doing that in our city and all around the world. That's right. When we give, it not only fuels the mission of Stonebridge, but it works in each of us to help us move closer to God. Money can be one of those things that takes up a large piece of our heart. It is in, it's an act of worship when we lay those things down Um, and surrender our finances to God for His glory and His purpose. If you've come prepared to give today, there are several ways. Uh, We can give online, our SP.Church app, in the back of the room, and through mail. But you can also text GIVE to 402-407-2770. You can either set up an account or just give us a guest. We hope you will check that out. It's an easy way to worship God through giving. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for partnering with us and growing your faith through giving. That's right. We're looking forward to continuing this amazing message series, This is the Way. Let's open up our hearts to hear what Mark has for us today. But uh, if this worship time hasn't got you to a good spot, it is exactly what I have needed. So thank you to a most wonderful worship team and a group of people that uh, have led us so well. And uh, I'm melted. I, in fact, I'm exhausted. Yeah, thank you. Um, So a few years ago, Linda and I went on a vacation up into Colorado to the western slope of the Mount Rocky Mountains to a little town called Uray, Colorado. It's a spectacular little little mountain town. And uh, we'd been there and been through there once before, but we'd never stayed in uh, in Uray. And so we had made a decision kind of last minute, like, hey, let's go to Uray, Colorado. And we drove all the way there. It's a 16-hour kind of deal and and but once you get there it is absolutely stunning and uh, as we drove into town I noticed that there was a place where you could rent jeeps and I was like what like what like what let's do that and so you get on the website and you find out it's only 175 dollars but it's for the whole day so I wore Linda down enough to say, this is what I want to do. I, all I want to do is I want to rent a Jeep. And she's like, I don't think that's a good idea. And I said, no, 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 this is, this is going to be so fun. We're going to go to places we've never ever seen before. And, uh, and let's do it. And she, um, I, don't, I, don't, I really, to this day, don't know why she said okay. But she said okay. And I did not bat an eye. I'm like, boom, book. And we're there picking up the Jeep like at 5 o'clock in the evening. So they give it to you from 5 o'clock in the evening until the next day at 5 o'clock. And so we get in the Jeep, and they, and they hand you a trail map, which looks more like a cartoon thing. Like, it doesn't, it's not a map, per se. It's just like a suggested guideline. And there's all these little trails that go all over the place, and, and they rate them from 1 to 5. And 1 is like... Um, anybody can do it to five. Nobody should. In fact, they told me as they, when they looked me upside down, I'm like, mm, you are not to go. You are not to take our Jeep, right? That's like, 
You are not to take our Jeep on anything above a four. Do not even try. Don't even think about it. Like, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. I can do this. I can do it. And so, and, and then they turn you loose. And they don't give you any other instructions but, like, please bring it back in one piece. That's it. They don't tell you nothing. And so you, we take off, and they suggested this one trail uh, that would be great for that evening that would take us to this waterfall and, you know, is rated like a two, so it's like no big deal. Well, it was, it was a beautiful drive, and there was a couple of shaky moments, like you're, you're kind of sliding around on some, some stuff, and like Linda's like, ah, you know, and, but we were not, we were, truly were not in any danger. We weren't. It was, it was proving line. And the Jeep was great, and it was really easy. We got to the waterfall, and we sat there. It was like, this is absolutely spectacular. And all I could think of is, I cannot wait for tomorrow because we're going large, right? We're going big. <laughs> and, and I did not realize it, but Linda was thinking, I cannot figure out how to get out of tomorrow. <laughs> and she, she was playing in her mind, like, everything she could do to, to just like, mm, mm, mm. Uh, but the next morning, we, we get out the little trail map thing and determine here's where we want to go. Here's where we want to go. We want to do this and over there and over here and like that, right? And end up in Silverton, which is another little mining town down the road, which is, again, is very spectacular. And uh, that was our goal. Again, the trails aren't mapped. There's not like a sign that says, turn right if you want to go on you know, this trail. And they, they name them. And they're like uh, Cockroach Trail or uh, Dead Man's Curve Trail. You know, so they have these names. So they're like, okay. And we had determined this is the route we're supposed to go. So we're climbing. And there's other Jeeps and there's other four-wheeling guy people doing stuff. And we're feeling pretty safe. And we're going up this trail. And then all of a sudden we realize there is no one. In fact, there is no one on our trail. No one. And, and we were on a mountain where we were above the tree line so we can see everything and anyone and there is not a person in sight except for that person way down there. But we thought, no, we're still on the right path. We're still going there and there was still kind of an assemblance of, of a trail and we're just going to keep plowing along. Well, then we run into their snow and this is in the summertime. There's snow on our trail, but you know what? I got a Jeep. It's four-wheel drive. I'm plowing through. And Lynn's like, I don't think we should be doing this. And there is no guardrail. There, is, all it is is death <laughs> to the to my left, where where my I'm on, on my side is just there, right? And I'm gawking. I'm looking around like this is so great. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I don't think we're going the right way. <laughs> we get up to the spot at the top, at, literally at the top of the mountain, where it looks like we're supposed to drive over. <laughs> you weren't. <laughs> there was no trail. When we got up to the other side, I got out of the Jeep, Jeep kind of like carefully and looked over like, Lynn, there's nothing over here. <laughs> and she says, what do we do? I said, I don't know. I think we should go back down the way we came. So I did about a 12-point turn to turn around and go back down. I had kind of the look that my dog has when he's in trouble, right? And, uh, we drove all the way down. Well, the guy that we saw at the bottom of the trail, like where there's other, was a ranger and uh, we stopped and said, hey, we're kind of lost. He goes, I kind of thought so. I saw you up there. I, like, why didn't you send some dogs or something? And he's like, why didn't you do that? And he didn't. And it's like, we got on the right trail and we got to the right spot and we didn't die. And it was wonderful. And I won't do it again. I just won't do it again. But it was absolute. I mean, it was breathtaking. But sometimes you get lost, right? You get sideways, you get on a trail that you're not supposed to be on and you don't know what to do. And, we, and oftentimes my reaction typically is, I'll just, I'm good, I, I can figure this out. I'm smart enough, I'm, I'm, I'm above average on things. I can do this, my, I can figure it out. And then oftentimes we get into a spot where we can't get out of and we don't know what to do. And... The last thing we want to do is sheepishly kind of head back down the, the trail, admitting that we were wrong. And, of course, 
the path that we're on is pretty important. And there's a lot of people who will tell you and a lot of little maps that will tell you, go this way, go this way. You'll be happy. You'll get it figured out. You'll be rich if you do this. And we're all looking for that secret code that tells us, here's the way and the path to happiness. And some of the, some of the advice we're getting from people is, uh, if it feels good, just do it. Uh, you're just looking for a good time. I, I just want to forget about life for a while. Trust your feelings. And I know that's a Star Wars thing. And, I, and every time I kind of cringe on that, like, trust your feelings. Uh, that's the last thing I should trust. Think about that. What did your feelings tell you when you were in high school? <laughs> go for it dude like whatever it was right you're like uh sure my feelings tell me yeah uh i'm in love yeah sure i'm like i i'm, I'm I, my feelings were always toying with me oh I, I don't really care what path you're on at times is like I, but i do know this is like we're all on a path and it all it will lead us to somewhere and once again we find ourselves back in the old testament book of isaiah the prophet we're in this message series called this is the way and will lead us all the way into uh, christmas eve where we find out and discover that jesus actually is the way he's the way and isaiah wrote about this stuff hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus came on the planet. And he tried to reassure the folks who were on the wrong path that there's comfort and hope and courage that comes from following God. In the first half of the book of Isaiah, God calls the nation into repentance. And then in the, in the 40th chapter, he takes a turn and offers a hope and a promise and a future blessing of a coming Messiah. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, we read, This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So he's invoking the whole deal, right? This is not my words. This is what the Holy One of Israel is going to say. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way, there it is, that's our little phrase, in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, well, your, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains. Their name would never be blotted out or destroyed before me. Leave Babylon, free from the Babylonians. Announce this with shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. This is what the Lord wants you to know. He's always, he's always wanted, and this may surprise you, you may not even realize it, but he has always wanted the best for you. He's always wanted the best for you. He says, I've always wanted to direct you in the, in the way that you should go, in the right path. Now, our culture does not encourage that kind of guidance. We live in a culture that says anything goes. In fact, our culture has lots of suggestions. Listen to your heart. People say this all the time. Go with your gut. Go with your gut. How many of us have gone with our gut only to realize that our gut had no idea what it was doing? That it was basically our gut saying, you probably shouldn't eat there again. <laughs> this is uncomfortable, right? But, but it's but how could it be, right? How could it be wrong if it feels so right? Yeah. I mean, really. Our world says, well, you should wait until you, you should wait to have sex until you're in love. Ask any high school boy if they're in love. <laughs> After just a first glance. It doesn't take anything to fall in love. Now, our culture really does encourage you to live out without much guidance. When the phrase, everybody's doing, it gets thrown in your face, it's really, or it's not really hurting anyone. It's your life, and do whatever you want. At the same time, when people tell you this, and you go that direction, they will be the first people to shame you because of the results of your decision. Go ahead and have sex with him. He's hot. And then you get pregnant and they go, oh, oh 
want anything to do with you. So you'll get lots of advice. And rarely does the advice that we get from our culture wants the best for us. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be, this is funny to me, do not be like a senseless horse or a mule that needs a bit and a bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but the unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. That sounds like a wonderful, loving father. I'm not going to let you figure it out on your own. I'm not going to turn you out and say, well, good luck. You know, you're just going to have to try stuff. He, he, in fact, is offering you wisdom to protect you. We oftentimes think that God's wisdom for us is to punish us. He just doesn't want me to have a good time. No, he wants to protect you from yourself. I love this. Don't be like a horse or a mule. <laughs> I don't know which one you are. <laughs> kind of have an idea. He says, don't be like a horse or a mule who has no understanding. And the only way you get them to do stuff is to put a bit in their mouth and pull. That's the only way we get under control, right? That, 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 that it's so painful that we adjust. Many of the woes that we deal with in our life is because we have been an unbridled horse or mule see the problem is i don't always trust actually i don't always think that the lord knows what's best for my life and that's funny right i think like think through that it's like why wouldn't god know what's best for my life even though he knows everything i still think i know more than he does and how many of us have lived with regrets because we decide like a live like a horse or a donkey or a wild stallion. How many of us would like to have those years back in college to do it over again, or the first year in marriage to do it over again, or that financial decision to do it over again, only because we said this to ourselves, I think I got this. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, it says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. All over the Bible, we are encouraged to live and to walk with wisdom. Years ago, I went through a Bible study. In fact, I did it a couple different times in which we dealt with this topic for several weeks. It got super annoying. The question that was always asked of us was, is this the wise thing to do? Not is it illegal, not if it's, you know, like, you know, not can I afford it? Not, like, is this the wise thing to do? Because uh, there's a lot of stuff, right, that, that's not illegal that I can do. There's not, you know, like, I got plenty of money to do it, whatever. But is this based on... Based on my past experiences, my future hopes and dreams, and, my, and where I'm at right now, is this the wise thing to do? Because in my past, like when I've done those things, this has happened. And, and as a result of, here's what I want for my future. If I do this, it's really going to mess that up, right? And so we have to think through this. Is this right now the wise thing to do, whatever it is, with my money, with my relationships, with... with uh, uh, Whatever I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is this the wise thing to do? Paul tells us, be very careful. Be very careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. And you already know. You already know. And I know. I already know what happens to my life when I live and an when I make an unwise decision. Paul says, well, we have to make the most of every opportunity because these days are evil. These days are evil. We're living in dangerous times. You have to pay attention. You can't afford to be careless. It's like he wrote it yesterday. 
we're living in dangerous times and dangerous circumstances. And what this past nine months has taught us is that if we live foolishly during this season in whatever area we want, and in fact, a lot of the stuff that we're doing right now is, is a result of the fact that we, we don't know what to do. And we've chosen incredibly foolish things to cope with the things that we're dealing with, the anxiety that we're feeling, the depression that is encompassing us. And so we don't know what to do with those things. So we have chosen destructive things to do instead. We just don't know the path. Therefore, he says, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Well, I wish I knew that. I wish I had him with me all the time to tell me what to do. It's like, oh yeah, actually we do. He is with us and he's prompting us and helping us and guiding us through these decisions. And he says, understand this. I don't, well, I, uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to play dumb with what wisdom is. I do know what has happened in my past when I've made these decisions. I do know what it's going to do to me right now if I make these decisions. And I certainly know that it's going to mess up my future if I live an unwise life. So then Paul uses this illustration to say, here's kind of what it looks like when we choose our own path. In verse 18, he says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. So he says, don't be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. Instead, so he says, like, I'm just giving you an example of what would happen if you decide to, to live, right, according to whatever you want to do. And he could have chosen all kinds of things. And, and I, I know he's, he's chosen not this, but it's like, how, how many of us understand this way too well? When we look back at our lives and go, oh, I wish I had... I wish I hadn't, I wish I had. And what all he's doing is saying, I want you to live a life that doesn't have the regret of doing something foolish. Don't get drunk. Because it'll, why? Why would he tell us that? Because uh, he's a party pooper? Like he's just like, knock it off you you know like you shouldn't be doing that no he said why because it will ruin your life and many of us probably are thinking no it won't 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 back off stay in your lane paul you're not my parent you're not even my pastor you're like just leave me alone Now, I do think he offers an alternative to this. So he says, well, instead be filled with the Holy Spirit and singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. Not, but compared to getting drunk with wine, that sounds pretty boring. Oh, great. It's just supposed to sing songs. Um, pass me that box. Whatever, what's ever in that thing? This sounds terrible. I'm in a, I'm in a mess. I'm in a, I'm in a hole. I'm in a, I'm in a. And I just want to feel good for a little while. Is that so bad? I just want to forget about life for a while. Is that so bad? Paul says, well, let's live as wise, not as unwise. Because oftentimes the decisions that we make will simply lead us into, onto a path of destruction. I've seen it over and over again. And if you look back on your life and you say, I wish I would, I wish I would have heard this before, how my life would have been different how my life would have been different if my mom and dad 
had been sober. You see, this leads us to a path, a way that we can go. Instead, he says, I'm offering you a different way. Be filled with the Spirit. The Bible teaches that when we place our faith in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will somehow, and I don't always figure this out, I, 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 I didn't know how this worked. Like, I tell Jesus I want him in my life, and, you know, he's, whoa, that feels different. No, that didn't happen to me. I kind of wished it would. But I do know that he's with me. I've sensed that more now than ever. Where you notice the Spirit is in your life and in your thoughts instead of giving your life over to something else or somebody else, he says, I simply want you to give yourself over to the Holy Spirit and the nudging that he'll provide. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 18, he says, Look around and see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, they'll be like jewels and bridal ornaments for you to display. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowded with people. And your enemies who enslaved you will be far away. And the generations born in exile will return and say, We need more room here. It's crowded. He says, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to free you from the Babylonians, the captivity that you're in. And that would happen years later for the nation. Finally, they would leave their captivity with shouts of joy. I want to offer you the same thing. Leave the life of captivity. Leave the life of captivity. We've been held captive. Sure, the pandemic has caused much disruption and dis destruction, but for some of us, we've made, we've made it even worse. We've dif drifted into some destructive behaviors that we even knew. We knew, we knew that it was unwise. So I always think that Christmas time is a good time to come back home. There's a God who truly wants the very best for you. He's more than willing to give you direction and purpose, to offer you a better way, a way that leads away from destruction and danger and captivity. Now is the time, I think, to begin to see that he is a good God who looks out for me, that looks out for me. The days we're facing are evil. And then you can put pandemic on top of that, which just speeds things up and causes us to question. And we all are tired and lonely and longing and struggling. But if we would just push for just a moment, the pause button for a second, and say and think this, if I keep going this way, it will end in disaster. I don't know if you want to think that through or not, but it's like if I keep doing the things that I'm doing and heading in the path that I'm heading in, where is this leading me? This is not about being a better person. It's not about not doing certain things. It's about simply following a path, a way that leads to an abundant life that where a good, good father who looks out for us and who sent his son for us at Christmas time so that we would have a Merry Christmas is waiting to guide us and to accept us. Now, you might be thinking, mm -mm, I don't even think I can get there. I can't get there. I am so far up the mountain on the path of, like, I might as well just go over the edge. Mm-mm. At some point, you have to stop and say, what I'm doing is leading me nowhere. There's got to be a better way. And there is. And God still offers us that. That is the message of Christmas. He came into a dark world to offer us a better way. Not a comfortable life, but a life that frees you and allows you to live. 
I guess I'd just like to ask you to, right now, pray with me. Father God, I don't know all the stories that are being written by people who are listening right now. I guess I do know some. I look around at my friends who are here, get the emails. There's so much joy that life is so different now. Not perfect, but different now because we decided to follow Jesus. And we're not turning back. We're not going back. I can I know occasionally we mess up. <sighs> we're so sorry. But I'm glad that you don't kick me out and rub it in. You just say, come back this way. Come back this way. Okay. So I hope right now that somebody will find their way back to you. Christ, we pray. Man. 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, he's a way maker. stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you stop, you never stop working, you never stop, oh come on, sing it out, even when darkness. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We praise you for these truths. Amen. I thank you so much for being here with us. So just like Mark said, the Christian life isn't about figuring everything out or having it all together. It's about having life that has hope and peace and abundant life. So that's why we celebrate Jesus in this season. And we do want to invite you to our Christmas services this year. So if you're attending online, go to our website. You can find all of the online service times and you do not need a ticket to attend any of our online services. But if you do want to attend in person, go to the website. You'll find all of our campuses and service times and you can reserve a free ticket to any of those services. So we just want to remind you that this season is all about Jesus and the life that we have in him. So let's remember that and have a great week.